I, uh, for a long time, was interested in explaining engineering to uh, the general public and to engineering students who had very few courses in engineering. The pencil is a very interesting item in this regard, largely because people don't notice it until their attention is called to it. When I first came to Duke, for example, I noticed that the pencils that were in the supply cabinet were, were different. Uh, the pencils that were in the Duke uh, cabinet were, were these uh, blue Duke University number two pencils. Uh, but uh, I couldn't quite at first put my finger on why these were different. What is it that called my attention to this and made me look at the pencil in ways that I hadn't looked at pencils before? Eventually, I realized what it was, and, and most pencils are, are yellow. Uh, they're uh, somewhat like, uh, like this. This is a classic yellow pencil. In fact, they have a piece of brass at the end that holds a pink eraser. Duke pencils were blue. Just by accident, I came across an article that was entitled Breaking Pencil Points. Well, the object of this particular engineering paper was to try to explain why it breaks, how it breaks, and why it breaks, where it does, and how it does. Uh, these are trivial questions on the one hand, but on the other hand, they are fundamental questions that an engineer or an analyst would ask because if, uh, if we can't explain something so simple as that, can we explain how an airplane uh, holds together? Can we explain how a power plant uh, uh, keeps from having its pipes break? Can we explain all sorts of things, uh, dams, buildings, and so forth. The pencil provided me with uh, a simple idea for unifying a lot of the coursework in engineering, motivating engineering students uh, to uh, look at uh, really some of the trivial problems that appear to be the most trivial and uh, see them not as uh, simple problems that are tangential to their engineering, but problems that help them understand the engineering method the nature of what it is they're doing. I found that the students can immediately relate to questions about the pencil. You can hold it up and you can, you can do a demonstration right there. You can show them right then and there what it is you're talking about and how this uh, relates to, to ideas about engineering. And if they have any doubts, they can try it themselves. They can, they can press a pencil onto the paper and see how the point does in fact break and it breaks in a very predictable way. The latest object that has begun to capture my, my attention more and more is, is the paper clip. The, uh, I, I have a collection of, of paper clips here that I strung together uh, to emphasize that the paper clip is really not uh, a single type of device. There are lots of different kinds of paper clips. Why are there different kinds? What caused these different kinds to, to develop? Why are some made of plastic and others uh, metal? What's behind this diversity? In fact, the course I'm teaching this semester, I have as, as a midterm project for the students that they design a new paper clip. As you know, today is the day that we're going to um, report on our projects. And the uh, class uh, assignment was to uh, play the role of inventor or designer or research engineer and come up with your own design, or you're to uh, perhaps argue that one of these here is already as, as good as we can expect a paper clip to be for various reasons. The fundamental reason that a clip works is because of the elastic limit of the materials and the principle of Hooke's Law. It's possible, for example, to say to students, well, here's some wire, design a new paper clip. It's certainly not practical to ask a student to design a new bridge. Everybody is capable of taking one of these paper clips and turning it around, using it, and, and experimenting uh, very quickly. Some of our most famous bridges are very, very difficult uh, case studies to convey to students in the course of a semester. The, the complexity of them means that they necessarily have to be treated in a rather superficial way. By concentrating on something simple like a paperclip, you can go into much, much more detail with the hope of being more complete. A and as a result, all the essential features are there, but they're much more readily uh, conveyed. But I think to be quite frank, I think there was a little snickering among the students at first when they thought we're going to look so closely at the paper clip. But the more closely we look at it, the more they appreciate that, that yes, indeed, this is, a, this is a, a fruitful exercise. Today, uh, the smart clip 
I will prove, is better alternative because it holds much better. It looks much better. And of course, it's cheaper because I use less material. Now this first test here, here is a smart clip and here's a gem clip. And when I pull these two pieces of paper, you'll see that this, the gem clip falls out first. One thirty. It can't hold one thirty. One hundred and thirty grams. Yet the uh, smart clip with one thirty, I could probably stack a lot more on here, but I don't have that much time. You get the point. <laughs> I'm now getting into bridges and large structures, and I'm showing the students, look, this is just like uh, the problems that are faced in these simpler objects. Do you see that? And they do see it. And I can judge uh, from their questions that uh, they see it very clearly. So they're beginning now to be able to look at, at much more complicated uh, structures uh, and, and ask similar questions as we did for the pencil and, and, and the paper clip. And, uh, when a question comes up relating to something much more and more complicated, we can explain it in, in the context of something more simple. And one of the easiest things I think is many times you'll have a paper clip and you'll be slipping it onto the paper and many times you'll take it off and the points will come back through the paper and you'll rip your paper or mess the paper up somehow. Here the points are located at the very tip top of the triangles. That's the idea is to make them realize things that they, they have sort of overlooked and that creates an interest in, in looking at other things with the same curiosity. The gem has become a piece of Americana. Um, when you think of, when you, someone says paper clip, the only image that pops in your mind is of the gem clip. It's inexpensive, light, strong, easy to use. Looking at the paper clip, looking at the pencil and explaining uh, these ideas shows that uh, some of the most common objects are uh, interrelated with all other parts of society. This is not something new. Uh, we've moved away from an appreciation of the fact that, that we're all in this together. Uh, artists and engineers are really uh, part of, of the same, same effort, ultimately.